what's the time? Nearly seven o'clock. The boys, the other boys will be arriving soon. Like I said, I start at seven. At six, sorry. Everyone else starts at seven. I'll stop recording for now and I'll if I have anything to add later, I'll restart the video. Stay tuned guys, I'll see you on the other side. Do. 
you can't really be sort of blamed. In Australia, we've had education programs over the last 20 years and we have strict fines if you're dumping rubbish. If you get caught throwing rubbish on the ground, you get a big fine. We've had an education system in place for a long time and people know not to not to rubbish not to rubbish uh, how do I put it yeah not to rubbish your own country and it's good to see the Philippines are uh, taking note there's been a lot of awareness brought in by people about polluting the environment keeping it clean and the only way that's going to get any better is if more of us do our fair share but the key the key to all of this is education you've got to start early you've got to teach your children not to throw rubbish put it in a bin we have a uh, not Australia Day but we have a clean up Australia Day once a year it's a national day where the whole of Australia get together, groups, communities, volunteers, the normal day every Australians, we all get together, everyone has certain designated areas where they all get together and um, they all go around picking up rubbish. And I've noticed that's happening now in the Philippines, a lot of these foreigners are joining in, they're making the, uh, the awareness for these issues more and more mainstream and the public are taking notice when a lot of cleanup programs in the Philippines Manila Bay is one of them that used to be just as Duterte puts it a cesspool like he did with Boraca he closed that down for a year and has made a dramatic improvement for Boraca and slowly other areas are taking note, other famous destinations are taking note and they started to do the same thing, which is a good thing. It can only be a good thing. We need to keep the country or keep, keep the world clean. Seven billion people or close to eight now, if everyone's throwing rubbish in the, on the ground, you can imagine how quickly the place is going to look like a rubbish tube. But if, if we can spread this awareness throughout the whole world, show people that it doesn't take much to keep the keep your country clean, then one day we will have a cleaner a cleaner world. So that's it, guys. Back to my containers. I've got another four to do here and another two behind me. So I'm going to slowly chip away at this and get these containers done and get them out.
Alright, so I've been asked to come and remove this e-waste that's outside. We just got a delivery the other day and they put it in the wrong spot. It needs to go inside. So I just want to go and have a quick look to see what it's like inside before I start hauling it inside. There's a fair bit there. I think we've got the space inside unless I go and grab the uh, Manitou and push push it up. Let's just have a quick look inside and see where we've got to put it. Okay. So it needs to go in this e-waste area and I need to um, try and make space. Now this is where the fun begins. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a lot of crunching going on there. One thing you've got to be careful of is with these little loaders, once you get the bucket up, there's not much space to the front windshield, so you don't want some big object come flying down and smash the windshield. I might bring some stuff in and then bring the manager in to finish it off. Coming on here. Because when 
you get big transformers that go through the rasper. It destroys all the knives and it can cost anywhere up to fifty, sixty thousand dollars to replace all the knives, the knives holders, stationary knives. There's a lot of a lot of bits in that machine that, that explode when a, a, a solid object goes into it. So at least with this shredder, the new one we're building up, that one's a little bit stronger and it's a different type of shredder which means it can actually shred pieces a little bit smaller and put less stress on the rasper once we feed it into the rasper at a later date. So that's what the boss wants. Ooh. Something just exploded there, it was probably like one of the old televisions. But you can't help it, they want it out, they got to get it out. Let me know in the comments and I'll bring you around at other times and give you a better better look at what we're doing. I've got some stuff on the floor inside. Inside? I need that scraped out too if you can. Inside of the roller door? Yeah, I'll open it up. Alright, open it up. Alright. So there's more stuff on the inside. places have them these days and it's free to drop off your e-waste. Councils have drop off collection points, collection centre, uh, collection depots where you can take your, your used equipment, your used e-waste and they'll accept it free of charge. So do the right thing, don't just dump it, recycle it. Because if we all get behind this, and do our part, future generations might have a chance of living in a uh, clean, toxic free environment. So, a bit of advice from Zockstar, clean up, do your bit. I know in the Philippines a lot of guys will go around collecting use televisions here it's a different story once your TV's broken or dead we, we just throw them out and go and get a new one but I noticed in the Philippines if something's wrong with the television it's not a major issue people do repair them there's a lot of repair shops all over all over the Philippines scattered everywhere and you can still buy the old the old style of uh, CRT televisions but here in Australia the only thing we're seeing here is a lot of the old styles that are being replaced with the new flat screen TVs but even here probably it's well, dare say it we're probably getting more of the flat screens than the actual old style of television Australia disconnected the uh, the old analog system so most of those televisions just don't even work so can buy digital set-top boxes which convert the sig a digital signal back to an analog signal but you're gonna pay a couple of hundred dollars for that what's the point of wasting money on something that's outdated when you can buy a brand new flat screen TV for two or three hundred bucks um, here in Australia we've got a lot of choice there's a lot of cheap televisions now you can buy a 
60 inch LCD TV for like less than a thousand dollars. We have a uh, store called Aldi's, like a supermarket, similar to a uh, Costco, uh, where they do mainly groceries, but they do a lot of electronic stuff as well. And you get TVs coming in through through them that are 60, 65 inch LCD, LED TVs for like five, six hundred dollars. So why would you waste your time and money trying to make your old TV work when you can get a brand new full HD, sometimes they're even 4K, 4K TVs on the go these days, everyone's got one. They're even bringing out 8K TVs, so. But like I said, when your, your electrical item fails, stops working, don't just throw it out, please, don't throw it out. Do a little bit of research, find out where you can uh, take it and get it recycled, because every bit helps. Every bit helps. If everyone still does the old thing and just throw them on the footpath, the council will come and collect it, but sometimes they won't sort it. They'll just take it, put it in landfill, and we're just filling up our ground with toxic chemicals. Just looking inside here, we got pallets and pallets and pallets of printers and LCD screens, flat screen TVs, laptops, cages, pallets, cages, stillages, full of old laptops, full of old TVs, printers, you have no idea. We've got like probably about 50 pallets up across there that are full of printers. And in the car park down the back, we've got about 200 pallets. Each pallet has about 30 printers on them. And it just keeps growing and growing. The amount of printers that are coming through these days is ridiculous. Something needs to be done about this because these manufacturers, they don't give a shit. They just make them cheap. And they don't, they don't care. They don't care. Here, as soon as your printer's out of an ink cartridge, it's cheaper to go and buy a new printer. A black ink cartridge can cost you between anywhere between 60 to 80 to 100 dollars and a brand new printer costs you like 40 dollars with a black card brand new black cartridge in it so we need to um, also do something about that there's a thing that most of these manufacturers work on and it's it's like a um, end of life thing it, uh, lifespan of these electronics if I can think of it I'll mention it otherwise I'll probably put there in the um, in the bottom of the screen what it's called but what it actually means is they only design these things most of the cheaper electronical items they only design them to last six months if you're lucky you might get 12 months and they just want you to go out and buy another printer I remember when I was growing up, we had the same television for nearly 20 years. And it still works. The only reason it stopped working is because the government shut down the analog signal and you couldn't get a, you couldn't get a uh, signal. They turned off the transmission, so they pretty much forced everyone to move over to the digital era. As we all know, everything's gone digital these days and some of these cheaper televisions, again, they don't last that long. You might get a, a year, two year out of them, but for five, six hundred bucks, it works out cheaper than going and spending six or seven thousand dollars for a big screen TV like a Sony or a Samsung or an LG, or Panasonic. You're really paying for the, for the brand. Most of these cheaper TVs, they're all, all the screens are made by Samsung. So you're still going to get the same life expectancy on them, but you're paying almost a fifth of the price. So you can replace your TV almost every two years, have a brand new one. These smart TVs now, they're pretty good. And again, it comes down to the manufacturers. They need to stop doing this. 
how we're gonna as a as a community as as people how we're gonna try and protect the environment when they keep making so much so many printers so many electronic devices you, you just can't win you just can't win too many of them and there's not enough people not enough businesses like ours that actually process this and it's just getting worse and worse every year you look at you look at the phones these days when i first got my motorola phone i'm sure if i turn that on now that'd still be working but these days these smartphones they're all programmed to die within about one or two years especially apple i think they got caught out for sending updates to the user's phones that actually slowed the phone down and gave the impression that the phone was dying when in actual fact there's nothing wrong with the phone and I think that that's not that's not fair there's nothing wrong with the phone why should it die just because you want it to die so I can go out and buy another one I'm gonna pause this video here otherwise I'll, I'll keep talking all day I've only got an hour and a half on the battery, so I'll shut it down here and I'll just keep going, slowly chipping away at this, and then I'll catch you a bit later in the day.
processed yet or hasn't been sorted and all the electrical cables still connected you're trying to pick one lot up and it's all tied together with all the other cables like this bit here it's just all tied together with cables and just doesn't want to let go Close till I get up. It's 